if you walk in the ways that Jesus taught, then there's no hell to worry about. Paul said as much in his letter to Galatia. It's not by observing laws which accuse and condemn, but by showing loving kindness to those who deserve it and those who do not deserve it. There is no condemnation for those who walk as Jesus walked. As I wrote, what do I know, right? I keep thinking or saying that it was better when we were young, but it wasn't, not really. The powerful ignored us back then, and they sent us off to our own destruction. The difference was that we resisted. We understood what they were trying to do, that they were trying to destroy us. We care for one another. We tried to. Sometimes it was lopsided and misguided, but it was still striving to do what was right and honorable. That's gone. Now all that matters is the size of one's bank account, even if those funds were made by crime and the destruction of others. There's too many stupid people out there who still thinks this system works. They think that someday they will find the right employer and be elevated to a place of security. It's not going to happen. If you are buying that BS, I feel sorry for you. Don't ask me to respect you. They will come for you soon enough, and you will grovel at their feet, begging for your life while they laugh at you. I'm just saying, if you are going to call Jesus Lord, don't you think it would be a good idea to pay attention to what he thought and do what he taught? Is loving one another too damn hard a concept to grasp? And for those who reject religion, yet think that social Darwinism is the way to go, please, I do have some science for you. How about Colvin's work in 2000 on crime and coercion, random acts of coercion, and arbitrary violence lead directly to justifiable reprisal? That's not religious. That's science. And damn, it still proves the right is wrong. So the right loves the insurance system we had. Okay, so you live or die based on your wealth. Now folks, that means there are only 400 families in the U.S. who are worthy of life. And let me tell you something, you're not one of them. The evil government does not have the constitutional right to tell you to get medical insurance. Okay, I can, I can dig that. Tell you what, you righties, go ahead and die off and leave the nation to the rest of us who grasp the concept of life as an inalienable right. We will go broke if we make sure that everyone has food, water, shelter, health care, and a reasonable standard of living below which they cannot fall, yet we can sure as hell go out and force other nations to bend to the corporate will. Right now, all over the nation, people are praying to Jesus for one such thing or the other. How about asking him what he wants you to do for him? We're presuming that the Lord is there. We're presuming that he is Lord. Do you really think that the gospel is delivered by a cruise missile? Is that Jesus' way of conversion? 
how about this for a concept? Try living the way he taught. Can't even cite, blessed are the peacemakers here. That's too deep a concept right now. Let's try, if they don't listen to you, leave and go to the next city. Is that simple enough? Newsflash. Most people around the world know who Jesus is. They know where to find out about Jesus. They know that the average Christian is not Jesus. And oh my, the average Christian does not make Christianity attractive. Go freaking figure that one out. Hey, right winger, whatever happened to love your neighbor as yourself? Or love your enemies? Or as it is up to you, live at peace with all? What ever happened to those teachings of Jesus himself? Again, for the righties who don't want to talk religion on a Sunday morning, what about their party shoving that same religion down the throats of others? For over 100 years, we have had the science to tell how to stop crime and raise the nation in security. Yet, we don't do it. Why is that? Why? Because it is entertaining for them to watch the rest of us decay into slums and kill each other while they live off the fat of their money laundering and money changing. I'd say something like, we outnumber them, but damn, those who are too busy grasping at scraps that fall from the table are too deadened to listen to the only voice of reason out there. And it's not Obama's. So the hell with fighting them for their money. What I figure is we'll ignore them and await the judgment of science, not God. When the corruption they spread from the right eventually comes to take them, even they will not live forever, nor will their children. Some of us, the numbers that we are, will figure out how to circumvent this and their teachings by the wisdom of antiquity, whatever flavor that happens to be, and find a way to keep them at bay while we try to understand and work with the majority who do exist out there. We will make the world better one way or the other, one hand of salt or grain at a time, one atom at a time if necessary and bypass the corruption which is spread in the name of the corporate religious community. Jesus was not a Republican or even an American. And what would corporate religion do to Jesus today? Oh, tell me please. No. Let me tell you corporate religious today would kill him for being a man of power and of peace and of compassion. How do I know this? Because those who praise the name of Jesus so loudly are the same ones who attack and impoverish those who do what he says, and walk in his ways. I've seen it too many times. Jesus was a radical socialist. Get a clue. Read his teachings. Now, it's, it's funny, the religion detractors out there talk about God being an invisible friend. Can't fault them for that. I can't fault them 
for what Christians ignore that is provable. If you don't live for the Christ, how can the Christ be real? Now, didn't James point out that if you do not love those who you can see, how do you love those that cannot be seen? Just asking. We have guidelines, generic as they may be, that are over 2,000 years old, and they show us a better way of life. And yet, in the name of corporate religion, we circumvent those teachings and implant our own to justify what cannot be justified otherwise. As the song says, do it in the name of heaven, you'll be justified in the end. And the left tried to tie those teachings into civic life in a nation and are called evil for it. Who is evil? Those who usurp the name of God for corporate profit or those who strive to implant the teachings of Jesus in society? Who's evil? Now, I'll leave it there. I've said enough. I'll let the wind blow across the wilderness and hush the words of sanity. Thank you very much for your time. This is Cliff Potts. May your God go with you. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.